Now, as John just reported, Biden is wheels up for his trip to Israel. But as he was on his way to Andrews, his big meeting in Jordan was canceled. Hmm. Joining me now to discuss this, Florida Senator Marco Rubio. Senator, the president was already flying into a difficult situation, but given today's events in Gaza, the protests we're hearing about at American embassies, Israeli embassies, what are the stakes here? Well, first of all, this is all part of the Hamas playbook, and, and Hezbollah, and Iran, for that matter. They don't just want to go in and kill a bunch of civilians, slaughter babies, terrible stories that we keep hearing coming out. Then they want to damage Israel around the world. And, that, and so that's, what, that's why they take advantage of this. And they know that there are all these willing media outlets, not just Al Jazeera, but the initial reports from some American news outlets was that Israel had struck a hospital. So they know how to play would this Would Israel game. ever plan to strike no. a hospital? No, it would make no sense, number one. It would hurt them, correct? It would hurt them, and they know that. And the first, the second is, I look, at the end of the day, if you ask me to choose, do I believe Israel or do I believe the people that just slaughtered a bunch of babies? I believe Israel. But beyond that, it makes all the sense in the world. I'm glad they're going to release this footage. There is, side by side with the actual kinetic battle that you're seeing, you have an informational war going on. And unfortunately, it has all these people that join it, both on the far left in American politics, much of the media around the world. And, and I predict at some point you'll start to see that seep into a lot of the coverage here as well. We're still talking about the atrocities, but the day is coming when the whole focus will be on how mean Israel is, because they are eradicating a group that, that poses an extraordinary threat to their future and has already committed incredible atrocities. Senator Rubio, what's the strategy, do you think, of the IDF? They go into Gaza. Um, we're going to get into this a little later, but it, it, the word quagmire, mired in conflict, how do you get out? You get in, and how do you get out? Yeah, I mean, we, well, you don't take out Hamas. We understand that. I, I think part of it is, is still developing, honestly, and part of it, I think I would leave to military tacticians to talk exactly about what to do. I think the goal, though, is to make sure that Hamas is never in a position to want to do in the future what they did at this moment. And beyond that, I think it's important for Israel's enemies to understand what happens when you do these kinds of things to Israel. Israel doesn't just respond with 10 rockets and a condemnation in writing. You pay a tremendous price. This is a part of the world where the only language that's understood is the language of strength. Israel didn't start this war. They didn't want this war. This war was foisted upon them, and now they have to do what needs to be done. It is a nation that is literally fighting for its survival as it is surrounded by enemies that seek their destruction. Now, Biden is already asking Congress for another $100 billion, it looks like, across this afternoon on Bloomberg and elsewhere. $100 billion for Ukraine and Israel and a border, kind of pittance to the border here at home. Thoughts on that? Well, first of all, they shouldn't be linked, okay? Um, I think that there is support for Ukraine funding, and I think there is almost near unanimous, with the exception of some people that we know who they are, for supporting Israel. I don't think the two should be linked. The good news here is that a lot of the defense agreements the U.S. has with Israel has been codified. They already have the authority. They have the authority right now to pull forward about $24 billion. Congress has already passed that. And Israel, frankly, what they're asking for is that we sell them resupply if they start running low on munitions. So I'm not against that. I think Israel will need, we will need to do something. But I think we need to see how this develops until we know specifically what Israel is going to well, need, because what they're going to need for a fight in Gaza is very different from what they're going to need if it's a fight in Gaza and for, against Hezbollah coming out of Lebanon. Uh, you have expressed serious concerns about visa holders in the United States uh, who are of an Islamist bent who support Islamism, political Islam. Now, we believe in the First Amendment. We're going to get into some of this later on as well. But what about that and the people we're allowing into this country? Isn't well, it time to take first a First of all, the law, it's the law. The law says if you are a supporter of a terrorist organization, you shouldn't even have a visa. So now, once you get that visa, if you identify yourself as a, as, as a Hamas supporter, then you should have your visa canceled and you should be removed from the but country. But a lot of people aren't going to identify, but that's basically Well, what I think it's pretty, correct. listen, they, they, they were able to go and get all these people to take video and find out who all the people were and, and, and that went in on January 6th to the Capitol. They spent a lot of resources identifying oh, those yeah. people. I, I think that if they wanted to, they could go through the roster of these organizations, the people that, that signed those letters, the people that were out there protesting. To me, it's very simple. If you are in this country on a student visa, a professor to teach a uh, journalist visa, you're a visitor, and then you come out and say, I support Hamas, I support the slaughter of babies, you should be out of here, and your visa should be yanked. Or do you feel confident that the 90,000 Afghans that we allowed into the country after the Afghan withdrawal, that they're all, you know, for the American way, and they're all going to be part of our Well, American I think that's a broader challenge. That we, the, the nature of immigration in this yeah. country has changed. It used to be that people came to America because they wanted to be Americans. Now you have people that come to America but don't necessarily rapidly assimilate for a lot of different reasons. You take 90,000 people from anywhere in the world, 
and you're going to have people that are going to be, you know, a problem. I, I think if you were an interpreter who risked your life, worked well, alongside that's not our 90, folks, people, no, right? and that's not 90,000 people. Republicans have been pushing this, and, Senator. And, and, though and they've been, the, they're like, let them in, Nikki Haley, until like, she was. Well, I think back people. There are people that I mean, most certainly. Ha Ga Gaza people should be coming in. We've heard that. Well, Gaza's there are people that certainly helped us in Afghanistan, risked their lives, and we should be grateful for that. I don't think the number, as you said, is 90,000. I, I have real concerns about what that is. But I think the bigger problem we have right now is, is actually, in many cases, and you, the First Amendment does apply. Unfortunately, in this regard, are people that were born in this country to see signs. I saw a sign last week that said LGBTQ for Hamas. Do, does anyone want to break the news to these people about what life is like in places that are governed by people like that? Not just for, for gay and, and lesbian people, but, but, but for women. What life is like for these people. It is so ridiculous. But we have a higher education system that's combined mm -hmm. with a corporate media that has poisoned the minds of an entire generation of Americans, unfortunately. And, and it's a real problem for this country moving forward. Trump wanted $5 billion for the wall. We've given Ukraine $120 billion. Well, let me tell you something. And I think that's another challenge we have. No country in the world, Egypt is not allowing a mass migration yeah. of Palestinians into Egypt Our border right is now. in trouble. Well, the, the, the we're policing problem, a lot of other borders But the bigger problem in the borders, they're not enforcing yeah. the law. The, 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 these people turn themselves over to Border Patrol, and yeah. they do nothing. They let them right in. Yeah, and a special, a special interest uh, Increasing migrants Increasing every day. In. Yeah. Um, great to see you, Senator. Thank Thanks you. so much for coming in. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.